What's up guys and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another crazy day in the world of crypto. So sorry for my absolutely shocking lighting. I am still at home in the UK and I will be heading back to my office slash studio very soon. Anyway, in today's video, we're gonna go through exactly what I think is going on in the markets, where I think Bitcoin is going and the overall cryptocurrency market, and as well talking about a single project that I think is gonna do absolutely incredible and I just invested in just before I started filming this video. So if you like that sort of thing, smash up the like button, hit the subscribe button, and let's not waste any more of your time. But before we do, remember, nothing in this video is financial advice because I'm just a guy sitting in a living room. So this is the Bitcoin chart, obviously. And as we can see, I want to go through two scenarios here. As you know, long term, I'm bullish. Even in the short term, no matter what's happening right now, macroeconomically, I think that it's actually quite amazing that we are where we are right now. Bitcoin is sitting at 39,000. We haven't even broken the lows that we saw here around 33,000 back in January. We haven't even gone that low and things in the world have got absolutely crazy. So I do think it's actually kind of wild that we are still right now at 39,000. I thought it was quite a nice move up here, 44, 45,000. But as I said in the video when that was happening, I think it was moving a little bit too fast. But Will Clemente over here also agrees with me. He had to say stocks gapped down, oil up, credit spreads widening, Putin starting a war, and we've got the CPI print and the FOMC meeting. It's next week, not this week. But again, he's impressed that we're still above 38,000. Couldn't agree more. And where I think we're going now is just a super bumpy ride. We're going to have to see things significantly change in order for us to either uh, pump upwards, right? above that 45,000 or go downwards. I think where we are right now, people are seeing a real use case for Bitcoin happening in the world. So that is technically bullish for Bitcoin. But because we are so uncertain about where this is going to lead, I don't think anyone's dumping their money into the market. You'd have to be pretty crazy to be dumping your money into the market. I mean, I did buy some on that on that dip we saw back here. But of course, I'm crazy. Of course, I'm prepared for us to go uh, quite low. I do want to go over the worst case scenario that I can see happening. But first of all, the bullish case, we do have the option here to touch as low as 35,000 in the immediate short term, then down to around the 30 to $29,000 mark, I would say is definitely still possible. If we were to start closing below that, it wouldn't be very good. But you can see back here in May to July, we did for one second there touch around 39,000. So if we have a very similar scenario play out that we saw May to July, which still ended up in a very bullish outcome, we can have three lows. We saw three lows here and we've only actually seen two lows. So two significant wicks down. So we could easily see another wick down to the 33 to $35,000 range in my eyes, before heading upwards. That's what we're going to have to wait to see. And that's what I would consider bullish. Now, on the bearish side of things, let's just jump on to the weekly chart. And I do want to remind you guys, if you were around back in 2017, or this is your first time being involved in, you know, a considerable bear market or correction. Now, when we, when we ended the 2018 bull run here, we did have a many months of bumping around here where people thought that we were going back into a bull market and it never really happened. And overall, we did bottom out at an 84% decline at around the price of $3,000. So remember, 84,000. So if we do take the low here and we drag that from there down to 84%, sorry, not 84,000, 84% around there, we could see the absolute worst case scenario, but this is what happened last time at around the $10,000 mark. Now, I don't think this is possible, but I do want you guys to, uh, sorry, I don't think that this is likely, but it is possible. And I don't want you guys to think that either we're too bullish or too bearish here on the channel. We just have to look at both sides of the coin. Now, where we are sitting today, 39,000, could you sustain a drop to $10,000? Would that negatively affect your life? That's what you have to decide at a moment like this. I have looked at the scenario and I think that yes, I will be perfectly fine if we drop that low. And now with all of that said, I have actually bought a token today that I am particularly bullish on because I think long term we are going to do very well. If we pick... Sorry, that's just my dog down here making noise. <laughs> You're right. 
<laughs> um, I think that in the long term, if we pick coins that we genuinely believe in with dollar cost averaging and we're not FOMOing into anything, that's how we're going to make the most significant gains. That's how I've personally made the most significant gains, buying the tops of 2017, but continuing to buy things that I believed in. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, ICX, things like that during a bear market led to massive, massive gains even right now. So those are the things that I'm doing. And the coin that I'm actually looking at is Fan. Now, the reason why I'm talking about Phantom now is because just yesterday or the day before, some of the head guys left the Phantom project. So the price crashes as lead developers announce an exit. This is the this is the two leading developers at Phantom. So this is something that you have to sit back and think about. Do you think that these guys are the be all and end all of Phantom? If yes, knock this off your list. This isn't something you want to get invested in. But I've been looking at Phantom for a while. I've wanted to have a nice entry. This is a project that has a lot of other projects built on it and a lot of uh, promise in the future in my eyes. And I like to find significant uh, times of panic when to start an entry point. Now, remember, I am not dumping all of my money in. I'm, I will be dollar cost averaging into the project. Now, with that said, if you do want to get yourself some Phantom, one of my favorite exchanges is AAX. They are a partner here on the channel and I have some amazing bonuses and offers if you follow the link down there in my description. Of course, you can trade on the spot market, you can trade with futures and the P2P markets. And also on top of that, as you know, on this channel, I love to make the best of long-term holding. So so here you can stake your crypto at a rate up to 20% and they do have currently an offer going that your very first week staking, you can get up to 60% on that first week. So 60% on Bitcoin, BNB, you got massive offers with AVAX, Solana, even Sandbox and USDT, one of my favorite places to store money, not necessarily USDT, but stable coins, you get great rewards here. You can get up to 60% for the first seven days. If you do follow that link down there in my description. So with that said, let's just jump back to Phantom. Like I was saying, on the year, we are still up. I think it's around 200 or 300%. But in the last seven days, we are down from above $2 to where we are sitting today at 146. I bought it at around 144. And I think there is a long term possibility for this coin and project. And if we continue to go down, I will simply dollar cost average into the project. Another reason why I do like this project if we head over to this website called DeFi Llama something that one of my friends pointed out to me is that Phantom actually in comparison to their total value lock to their TVL they actually have uh, the smallest market cap so it's a multiple of 0 0.5 so they actually have more value locked into the ecosystem than the actual market cap if we look at something like Ethereum they've got 2.x multiple of the market cap Terra Luna 1.3 BSC 5.4 Avalanche 1.8 and as you can see Phantom 0.5 even Solana they're sitting at 4x so just so you guys understand exactly what that means if we check out the TVL to market cap here at 0.5 and we head over to Phantom's market cap you can see the market cap is 3.7 giving us around half the market cap to the amount of money that's locked in the project I think that that is a clear bullish thing for the project but I could be wrong this is just an idea that I've had and it is an obvious standout when you compare it to all other total value locked in these bigger projects. You can see Polkadot has a multiple of 14. So definitely suggest that you guys go out and research into that yourselves. And I've just noticed that as I'm speaking, Bitcoin is taking another little tumble down to 38.6. When I woke up this morning, 37 and 37.9, I think it was. So we are just in such a volatile state in the market. Obviously, everything that changes day to day with what's going on in Russia and Ukraine is obviously going to affect the market. So please don't make any rash decisions. Like I said, into this project, I've simply started my position. So an example of starting your position, if you have, for example, $1,000 you want to invest into a project, you can take just $100, invest it right now. Then if the market drops again, you can invest it. If the market drops again, you can invest it. And that is how I plan to do this. Very small positions. 
if we go to zero, it doesn't affect me. And that's how I think you have to look at any investment here in crypto. Like I said earlier, we could see a drop for Bitcoin down to $10,000. Do I think that's going to happen? No, because of the amount of fundamental bullish news that we have going on, but it is a possibility. Now, with that said, we got Skybridge Capital founder doubles down on a 100k Bitcoin prediction and expects Bitcoin to reach $500,000 long term. I actually agree with that, even though it seems a bit crazy. I think that the fact that Bitcoin is essentially digital gold and uh, there's only ever going to be 21 million is such a bull case for Bitcoin. But obviously, we don't really know what's going to happen. Also, Apple co-founder calls Bitcoin pure gold. And of course, the media using that as a headline will mean more people are interested in getting involved. If the co-founder of Apple thinks that something's interesting, it's of course going to drum up interest into the market. And just one thing I wanted to touch on, people always seem surprised when we see news headlines like 25,000 addresses related to Russian individuals or entities engaging in illicit activities have been blocked by Coinbase. Now, I want you guys to remember that, yes, of course, we are here to have decentralized finance and all of that sort of stuff. But Coinbase is a centralized exchange. A lot of exchanges that offer you fear on and off ramps are centralized exchanges. Of course, you can move your money into a decentralized place. But even with things like MetaMask, we've been seeing recently, that they've been blocking access to some people around the world. And this is something that I think we have to accept is where the market is going. There are still many many ways to be completely decentralized. You just have to go out and do your research into them. But to expect a project that is public traded company like Coinbase to be decentralized is uh, madness in my eyes. And with that said, I hope I did provide you with some value today. Again, if you do want to either trade this crazy, crazy market or you want a place to potentially store some of your crypto, AAX is one of the platforms that I suggest. And all of the links are going to be down there in the description. I guess I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Whew! <laughs>